Here's a really simple guide on how to gain muscle very quickly that I followed with a lot of success. The first thing I do in a work day at the top of the morning uh, when I wake up at 11 a.m. is I skip brushing my teeth and I go straight to my pantry. I take the first thing from my pantry, which is protein powder, because my entire pantry shelf is protein powder. This is the powder form of pure human deltoid muscle. And I just make a really tasty protein shake out of it and uh, just chug two of those. I go straight to lab. Once I'm in lab, I drop off my stuff and go straight to the gym to do my full body workout, both heads of my biceps and all three heads of my triceps. After I work out for two and a half hours, I go back to the lab in order to grab my stuff and then I'll stop by Chipotle, grab three bowls on the way home and sleep for 16 hours. And uh, just rinse and repeat for um, six years and you'll for sure get a lot of gains like I did. Hope you found this helpful and uh, yeah, please like and subscribe. What is up, Dong Army? It's your boy Royce. Today I have a really special video for you guys. I'm gonna be talking about a topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time now on this channel, and uh, that is toxic masculinity. No, just kidding, I'm talking about working out. So working out is one of those things that I've been doing for a number of years now, and that I am very passionate about. You know, I think it's just a wonderful way for you to stay in shape, to be healthy, to feel good, and also to build self-confidence in case you lack that, which uh, I did back when I started working out. My motivation for making this video is to provide a complete workout guide for beginners. This is something that I wish I could have watched back when I started working out as a freshman in college, which was um, <laughs> like seven years ago. Wow, geez. First, as a disclaimer, obviously this is not a fitness channel. I by no means am like the strongest or fittest or I don't know, biggest person on YouTube. If you're looking for someone who's shaped like, you know, <laughs> a, a box of muscle, a literal square of muscle, um, this is probably not the channel for you. But what I do have is a unique perspective as someone who's gone through college, who's gone through part of medical school, um, who has a really busy schedule. You know, I have to balance uh, failing experiments with making time for a workout multiple times a week. So from that perspective, I think this video will be really helpful to those of you who are like me and who want to pursue, uh, you know, a career where you just have lifelong uh, busyness and unhappiness. Obviously, I suggest checking out some other fitness YouTubers, my YouTube colleagues, uh, as one might say. For example, Jeff Nippard, uh, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com, you know, both the Jeffs, they're very great. They use a lot of great science and they uh, give a lot of great advice. And uh, if you're looking for uh, ter terrible advice, but a lot of entertainment, then I highly recommend Bro Science Life. That guy's really funny. It's all satire, so obviously take it with a grain of salt, but it's entertaining. The first thing I want to talk about is mindset. So obviously you saw from the thumbnail that I used to be, you know, a really skinny person. And I think it's, you know, really easy when you first start working out to feel really intimidated by the people you see in the gym or look super active and look super fit. And um, they're doing all these crazy exercises. And as someone who comes in with little to no experience, you know, it's hard to know where to start, uh, where to fit in, and it's hard not to feel judged as well. And I just wanna let you guys know that I really don't think a lot of people in the gym uh, judge others. You know, they're not gonna be, you know, scrutinizing other people. You know, people usually just have headphones on and they're just focused on the workout, doing their own thing. And you know, everyone started out skinny in the first place. You know what I mean? Unless you're like the rock and you came out of the womb looking like enormous, like a grown adult. They're gonna appreciate the fact that you are coming out to the gym and making a positive life choice. And obviously there are people who would judge you, but you know, if that's the case, does their opinion really matter? And also when it comes to mindset, I think it's really helpful to have a friend who's there for you, who's uh, very supportive in your workout journey. So the first thing I wanna cover are some basic concepts when it comes to working out. And I'm only covering these, not because you know I'm trying to insult your intelligence. Uh, it's just because I, I honestly didn't know um, how these things worked back when I started working out. So I hope this you know at least is a little bit informative for you. So the first concept is whatever muscle is being shortened, whatever muscle is being contracted is the one that's being worked out. When you're doing a bicep curl, that is shortening the bicep muscle and therefore working it out. If you're you know doing the reverse, which is an extension, that's working out the tricep. So this is a tricep extension that's shortening the tricep. Let's say you're doing a bigger workout like bench press. When you're pushing the barbell, what's happening is you're shortening the uh, chest muscles, the pec muscles. You're also shortening the front shoulder muscles, the front delts, and you're also shortening your triceps too. Your triceps as your arms get extended shortens as well. So all these muscle groups are being engaged. You're doing, for example, rows, um, that is, you know, pulling backwards. Uh, what's happening is you're shortening the back muscles. It's like a reverse bench press. You're shortening the back muscles and you're shortening your biceps. The one exception to this is the deadlift. You know, the idea here is even though you're not shortening uh, your back muscles by, by flexing your arms, you are still working out your back really well because it's just 
a ton of heavy weight and you're just supporting it um, you know, just statically. That's the idea of the deadlift there. Another important concept is the mind-muscle connection. That is when you're mentally thinking of, of squeezing and flexing your muscles more, then you engage the muscles more and therefore work it out better. Uh, so that's really important, for example, with bicep curls. Another concept is hypertrophy, which is uh, kind of a pretentious word that you'll just hear thrown around in the fitness world. So essentially what that means is growth of the size of your muscle cells and therefore just bigger muscles. So let's say you're training for hypertrophy, that is you just wanna look bigger. Um, you wanna do low weights with higher reps. Uh, basically you wanna do something like four sets of 20 really high reps with really short rest in between so that your muscles can undergo that metabolic overload. That is, you know, there's not enough time for you know, the blood to flow into your muscles and to replenish oxygen and ATP. And that stresses your muscles more and causes hypertrophy. In contrast to hypertrophy, you could also train for strength. And if you're training for strength, you essentially do the opposite. Basically you do obviously high weights because you're, you're training to lift more uh, with lower reps and a lot of rest in between. So you could do like, let's say three sets of like four or something and, and rest like five to 10 minutes in between each set. And so, you know, if you train that way, you'll be able to lift more weight, but in general, you won't look as big as the people who uh, train for hypertrophy. So that's why it's kind of nice to have a balance of both. Now, when it comes to structuring your workout, the structure you want is higher weight in the beginning while you still have the energy and you're not fatigued. And then uh, as you become more and more tired, then you do lower weights with higher reps. That's kind of the progression you want. So um, in the beginning of your workout, you wanna do the most amount of weight possible. What that means is compound workouts, so multiple muscle groups. You don't wanna just do bicep curls. You wanna do you know, bench press that moves multiple muscle groups. You wanna do squats that engages a lot of muscle groups. Start with those where you push a lot of weight possible to get the strength component in there. And then gradually you taper down, you do um, you know, lighter workouts with higher repetitions. So you get a nice balance there. That's essentially the structure of any good workout regime is to do heavy lifts first and then taper down. Before you start working out, I highly recommend warming up and stretching so you don't hurt a muscle. Uh, you know, if you're into masochism, you can try jogging. Um, I highly recommend dynamic stretching. Some of my favorites are like, you know, big arm swings in both directions, uh, bear hugs and uh, big leg swings, um, you know, right in front of you and side to side. Stretch. 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 Really? Stretch. Cause you know, some people, you grow up, you're young. Stretch. <laughs> you better stretch. My, my dad still plays basketball now. And the hardest part is not actually playing, it's getting up in the morning the next day. Now I'm gonna talk about my weight gain. In 2016, I weighed 152 pounds. Fast forward to 2023 this year, I weigh 195 pounds. And so you can see in this graph my progression in terms of height and weight. And so in the last five years, I've gained roughly 40 pounds. And so these data are based on my medical records. This is what the doctor's office measured in terms of height and weight. I kind of wish I did a better job of, of weighing myself on my own personal scale. Based on my estimates, I've gained around 20 pounds of muscle over the last five years. And I think, you know, a few pounds due to fat, I gained about an inch and a half in terms of height. And uh, each inch is about 10 pounds or so, according to some scientific sources I found. So overall, 20 pounds of muscle in five years. For this video, it's actually funny. I didn't have any of this information. And uh, you know, I've been you know, bouncing around in different cities, uh, having different doctors. But you know, it's surprising how much like medical information doctors disclose by just you know calling them and being like, hey, my name is Royce and here's my birthday. Can I get this you know specific medical data about myself? Uh, I feel like it's like a HIPAA violation or something just to like give it out so freely. So now I'm gonna talk about the workout regime. This workout regime is called the five by five. This is a super popular regime that a lot of people follow as beginners because it's just a great way to build foundational strength. And even intermediate and advanced lifters, um, you know, follow the five by five as well. It's just a really great uh, way to fit in a very efficient workout just three times a week. When you come into the gym, it's really tempting to just want to grab like, you know, the heaviest dumbbells you possibly can and just start, you know, bicep curling until your nose bleeds, but that won't build foundational strength. So the idea of these workouts is they are compound workouts. Basically you work out three days a week. On the first day, you just do squat, bench press, and barbell row, five sets of five. You keep it at one weight the entire time. Then you have a rest day. And then the following day, you do your second workout. That is squat, overhead press, and deadlift. Again, you're doing five sets of five for squat, five sets of five for overhead press. And then you only do one set of five for deadlift because it's kind of an exhausting workout. And you don't wanna overwork yourself on that. And that's it for the second day. Then you have a rest day and then you work out again. And this time you alternate. 
So now you're doing squats, bench press, barbell row. So essentially what you're doing is three days a week, let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday you're doing workout A, Wednesday you're doing workout B, Friday you're doing workout A. And then the next week on Monday, you start at workout B, and then you go to A, and then to B. You're literally just alternating between those two workout days. And then you have rest days in between to give yourself enough time to recover, to not feel sore for the following workout day. And the purpose of doing five sets of five instead of something like three sets of eight is that you know, you're still doing the same volume essentially. Five times five is 25, whereas three times eight is 24. So they're essentially the same volume, but you are lifting heavier weight because you're doing fewer reps. Like I was talking about earlier, you're working out for strength versus hypertrophy. Because you're working out for strength, that means you can take as much break as you need in between your sets. So let's say I do my third set of bench press and I'm like super tired. I can rest literally up to like 10 minutes before I do my fourth set. And then like 10 minutes before I do my fifth set. You can take unlimited time because you're working out for strength. Obviously it's not ideal to take like three hours to do your workout, but you have that option if you want to. Here's the trick with five by five is you start with super low weights. So you can start with just the barbell, for example, 45 pounds, or you could have, you know, the barbell plus like, you know, 10 pounds on each side or 25 pounds, whatever you're comfortable with. For that one workout, you stick to that one weight. Even if it's like pretty easy for you, just stick to it, finish the five by five. And then on the next workout, you raise the weight by five pounds. You add two and a half pounds to each side. So if you squatted, you know, barbell plus 10 and 10, then the next workout you do barbell plus 12 and a half and 12 and a half. And that'll be your second day workout, stick just to that weight. So if I successfully squatted five by five at hundred pounds on one workout, then the next workout, I will bump it up to 105 pounds and do a five by five there. And then to 110 on the next one. And if I do bench press hundred pounds, I do a five by five successfully. Then on the next time I do bench press, I raise it by five pounds, two and a half on each side. So I do 105 pounds for a five by five. So you increase the weight of each specific workout after you complete the five by five successfully. And so the whole point of the five by five is to just watch the numbers, you know, see the numbers climb, see your strength grow. And naturally, obviously, as you grow strength, you will grow muscle, you will look aesthetically better. That's just, you know, kind of how it works. Just focus on the numbers, I think, is, is really the whole point of the five by five. What's great about it is it's so simple. But other workout regimes out there uh, can also be really good, but they're also very complicated. There are a lot of, you know, different workouts that you have to do. Here you literally just do five workouts. It's really easy to remember, especially if you were a busy college student or a busy medical student like I am right now. So the five by five has been around for a long time, but there's this really famous guide online on stronglifts.com that uh, is a super comprehensive guide on the entire workout regime. Probably, you know, a little too comprehensive. So in case you have questions that I was not able to answer, I highly recommend checking out the, the guide. The link will be in the description. So the next thing I want to talk about is diet. In case you don't know me, my diet is really well balanced and super healthy. And in case you do know me from, for example, my day in the life videos, um, I just lied to you completely. I still have junk food like pretty regularly, to be honest with you, I probably shouldn't, you know, as a future medical professional. I never um, shy away from eating like fried foods, from eating like ice cream. You know, I do try my best to, um, for the most part, eat a lot of, you know, lean protein, eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of vegetables. Just based off reading a lot of resources online, they say, you know, eat like, you know, 1.5 grams of protein per pound you are. So if you weigh 100 pounds, eat 150 grams of protein per day, you know, eat like 3000 calories a day, 4000 calories a day. So again, I didn't really count calories. I didn't really count carbs or proteins, anything, any macros like that. I would highly recommend uh, just eating a lot of protein, eat a lot of vegetables, um, just try your best. It's hard to count your calories and, and to be so focused. I mean, you know, people have lives, they have to like, you know, focus on work and, and focus on school. You know, I think it's kind of unreasonable to follow like the, the healthiest, most well-balanced diet, to be honest with you. If you're like me and you don't do that, I think that's totally fine. If you do do that, then uh, power to you, honestly. I didn't really take any supplements like creatine or um, whatever else type of, you know, workout supplements there were. I did uh, drink protein powder and I thought this was great, especially right after your workout. You have those fresh, you know, micro tears in your muscles. Um, so drinking either whey protein or soy protein. I kind of alternate between the two. They act as a very readily available form of protein. So once you drink it, very quickly your body can use up that protein and uh, digest it and use it to rebuild the muscle. Whereas if you're to like, you know, just eat like a piece of chicken or something, um, I think it takes longer for your body to process that. Um, so it's not as quickly available. I think that's a great strategy. I'll, I'll put links in the description 
for my favorite uh, protein shakes. And obviously too, protein shakes are just like delicious. My wife will be like after a workout, hey, can I try some of that? I'm just curious. And literally just like a vanilla, you know, super sweet shake. And uh, you know, how can this possibly be good for you? Obviously the goal here is to build muscle. And so it's okay to have uh, some sugar there to stimulate insulin release and therefore, uh, you know, anabolic muscle growth. So the next thing I wanna talk about is inevitably what happens when you plateau. So obviously the five by five is great. It's great to see your numbers climb, especially in the first few weeks, you're gonna be adding weight literally with every workout and you'll see your squat uh, completely explode in terms of numbers. But you know, obviously you're gonna, you know, hit a wall. You can't just, you know, increase your numbers forever. Once you hit that stage, there are a few strategies you can do. One thing is instead of doing a five by five, you can do like a three by five or a three by three. You can just go from there and keep climbing your numbers. Um, that's an easy way to do, you know, less reps, but even more weight. And if you're stagnant at a five by five level, just drop 10% in weight. So if you're at like 200 pounds, just drop to 180, do five by five and keep progressing 185, 190, 195 over the next few workouts. You know, hopefully you can get over that hump past the 200 mark and keep going from there. There are a few strategies. I don't think there's any, you know, perfect one. I don't think there's any wrong one, to be honest with you. You know, this workout is geared towards beginners, in my opinion. Uh, it's really great for beginners. You know, I, I used it uh, when I first started and had really great results. And, uh, you know, it's okay to, to graduate and and feel like you have to move on. And, and right now, actually, I don't do five by fives. I actually do push pull legs on three separate days and I just kind of alternate between the few. Uh, it's mostly just push and pull and I do legs sometimes, but like I've been saying this entire video, five by five is a great way to do a lot of foundational uh, strength building. There are other workouts you can try, just depending on your goals. You know, if you want to be, you know, super sculpted and be like a bodybuilder, then you can have a workout that's more tailored to hypertrophy. If you want to be a power lifter and therefore lift as much weight as possible, then obviously you can train for strength. So now I'm gonna break down each of the workouts one by one with um, just a few tips here and there. Obviously I don't want this to be like an hour long video. So um, I highly recommend uh, looking at some other videos from people like Athlemax, um, especially on things like deadlift. I would recommend watching like two other videos on deadlift just to you know be safe because deadlift is one of those things where you know you gotta be careful. You can really herniate a disc. So actually the first thing I'll talk about is deadlift. You're just lifting this weight up from the ground. You're not, you know, flexing your, your, your arms or anything. You're keeping your arms straight. Essentially, I break this workout down into two phases in my mind. Chest up, your butt down, rotate your pelvis forward so like your groin points down towards the ground. Put your hands just outside of your shins. The first phase is to get the barbell up to your knee. And to do that, you just simply do a leg press. Just drive through your legs to lift that barbell up. Uh, careful not to scrape your knees. Keep the barbell really close to your shins. And then once the barbell is past your knees, then you do a hip thrust. Push your, your pelvis forward and really flex your glutes. You, you really wanna emphasize flexing the glutes here so you take away the strain from the back. That's essentially the two phases. And then once you're at the top, just let go of the weights and let it just bounce on the um, the platform. I think that's actually safer for your back. Otherwise, you're just gonna you know let the weight drop back down and you could potentially hurt your back on the way down. The beauty of this five by five is to start with really low weights. Start with just 10 pounds on each side so you can really get the form down. Don't start super heavy, then you'll compromise your form. And so um, I would highly recommend getting a friend here to watch you, to record you, um, to make sure that you're doing this safely. You know, honestly, this is no joke. You could, you know, herniate your precious discs uh, in your spine, in your lumbar spine. I would recommend using a, a powerlifting belt actually. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description for a really cheap one that I found that's really effective. You can just keep it in your backpack, it's really compact. It really just takes the load off your lower back. I just don't think it's worth it to really risk your lower back. It protects, you know, those precious discs in your back. And uh, in case you don't have a powerlifting belt, you can um, just like, this is not like a perfect substitute, but you can basically just hold in your breath and really, um, you know, push out your belly and just keep it really tight, keep your core really tight. And that kind of achieves a similar kind of effect. Um, it just keeps your, your core tight and takes a uh, strain off your uh, back. And again, remember to really flex your glutes at the very top of the exercise. That's how you protect your back here. Next thing I wanna talk about is squats. Again, you can use a belt here if you want. I, I like to use a belt. You can have your feet however spaced apart, you know, either shoulder width or closer or further apart. Point your chest up towards the ceiling. I don't think it really matters how low you get. You could go super low and even bounce at the bottom, or you could go not as low. I've seen, uh, you know, Jeff Nippert videos that basically say all are permissible. So it's really your choice, you know what I mean? I, I like to go pretty low if possible. The important thing here is to make sure your bar path is vertical. Your bar path, meaning the line that your bar draws as you move up and down through the motion. You don't want any horizontal component. 
um, because that means there's a lot of uh, shifting in your feet. There's a lot of wasted energy there. Again, you can have a friend watch you, friend record you. I think that's super helpful. So the next thing is barbell row. You can basically do this at any height. You could start it from the ground and like be totally bent over, or it could be, uh, you know, more standing and, and take it off of a squat rack. You basically want this motion. You want to feel like you're bending the bar. This is something that I uh, learned from Jeff Cavalier. What that does is it brings your uh, elbows inwards. As you're pulling the bar towards your body, you want your elbows tucked if you can. And what that does is it engages your back more. It, it causes your back to squeeze more and contract more. But the trick is to basically aim for the bar to hit right below your pecs. So your pecs are up here, basically your upper ab if you were to have a six pack. Again, I would highly recommend using the belt because um, especially if you're leaning way over, over the ground, you're in a vulnerable position with your back. You never want your back arched. You always want to rotate your pelvis forward so that your back is neutral. It is totally flat. It's not curved one way or the other. So the next thing I want to talk about is bench press. This one's pretty straightforward, especially as a beginner where you don't have to worry about things like leg drive. For example, you should aim for hand placement such that uh, by the time the bar uh, hits your chest, your forearms form a 90 degree angle with the bar. That's really the ideal spacing of your hands there. When you first lay down on the bench, you want the bar to be right above your eyes. That's the positioning you want. Lift the bar up and then you move the bar down your body so that it's positioned right over your chest. So you move it from eye level to chest level. And this is a really vulnerable position for your shoulders. So I highly recommend getting a friend to help you with the lift off. When the bar comes down to hit your chest, you want it to hit your lower pecs. And in order for that to happen, you need your elbows to be lower as well. You don't want your elbows up and out to the side because that can uh, really compromise your shoulder joint, including your AC joint. You want your elbows to be closer to your hips. Arms should not be 90 degrees way out to the side, but should be more like 70 degrees away from your body. And the final thing is overhead press. Essentially, it's like bench press, but it's now vertical. You're basically doing the same motion, but you're squeezing upward. You're squeezing these pecs up here. The front delt, the lateral delt. Have a hand grip such that the bar can uh, touch your sternum. And then when you push up, obviously you wanna lift up your chin so that you don't just hit your chin with the barbell and you wanna push up pretty vertically. Don't like bend your legs and jump up. That's a totally different exercise. It's not overhead press. It's called like push press or something. You wanna do an overhead press where you just tighten your glutes, really tighten your quads. After you clear your chin, so you don't hit your chin, then you can lower your head. And as the bar is going up, you rotate your shoulders back straight up above your head for engaging your shoulders. Whereas if the bar was not directly above you, if the bar was in front of you, you wouldn't engage your shoulders as much and you wouldn't be able to get as much strength in there. You won't be able to lift as much weight. And again, I highly recommend having your friends, you know, record you from the side or watching you just to make sure your bar path is vertical and uh, directly above your head. Yeah, that's basically it for this video. Um, I hope you guys found this informative. Uh, this, wow, was a really long video for me to record. I'm actually like, <clears throat> my voice is, I'm on the verge of like losing my voice. I need to get a cup of water. It's just, I don't know why I kept the, the water so far from me. I hope you guys found this video informative and best of luck on your workout journeys.